animal lovers and welcome to Posado's Safe Haven. Here we have a mighty mission of ending animal cruelty and creating a more compassionate world. And we want you to join us. So welcome here today to a virtual tour of Posado's Safe Haven where we are going to meet some of our charming animal residents who call this place home. My name is Brenna and I will be your tour guide today. Our first stop is the Potbelly Yard. Our Potbelly Yard is currently home to four pigs, Violet, Boris, Pepper, and Oliver. Now, when we go inside, I want you to make some observations. So that means look really closely and observe things. And I want you to write down all of the similarities that you see between the pigs here and dogs. So put your thinking caps on and really look closely to see what you notice and see what is the same between pigs and dogs. Let's go. Did you know that there is no such thing as a mini pig? In fact, pot belly pigs, like these ones here, um, they weigh an average of 150 pounds. So if you ever meet a pot belly pig or a pig that is less than 150 pounds when it's full grown, that generally means that that pig has been malnourished, which means it wasn't getting enough food throughout its life as a baby, which is very unhealthy for it. So pigs like these, they need to be able to grow to their natural size. And that means that mini pigs really aren't a real thing. So what did you observe? Maybe that pigs and dogs both wag their tails? Or maybe that pigs and dogs both like to play? How about that pigs and dogs love to get pets and even belly rubs? Maybe something else. Whatever you saw, good job. Take a moment after the video to share your thoughts with your family or friends. Next up, Waterfowl Yard. Welcome to the Waterfowl Yard. Now can anybody guess what waterfowl means? If you guess that it has something to do with water, then you're right. So waterfowl are birds like ducks and geese who depend on water in order to be happy and healthy. Just like humans need certain things to be happy and healthy. So I know that I need to go hiking in order to feel my best. Can you think of some things that you need to do in order to feel your best? Let's go inside and meet some of the ducks and geese. Many of the waterfowl that live in this yard were rescued from situations where they did not have access to water. And so they were very upset and sad and probably weren't feeling very good when they were living in these situations. That's why we had to rescue them and bring them here to Posado Safe Haven. How do you think you would feel if you weren't able to do some of the things that you loved? Did you know that things like bread and crackers aren't good for ducks and geese? It might be fun to feed them things when you meet them at a pond or at a park, but it's really important to make sure that you give them something that's good for them. Things like bread can make their stomachs upset and can actually rot and get moldy in their water sources. So it's really good to give them things like berries and natural things like vegetables, like lettuce, or even mealworms. Those are all things that are better suited for their tummies and are better suited for the environment that they live in. So, 
What did the waterfowl need to feel their best? They all enjoyed being around friends and other birds. They liked clean water and fresh food. They liked to stay clean and play in ponds or pools. Anything else? Just by paying attention to animal behavior, we can see what they need to feel comfortable. What kind of things do you or your family and friends need to feel your best in your everyday life? Next up, chickens. Our next stop is the chicken yard. Now look closely when we go inside because chickens come in many shapes, sizes, and colors. When we go inside, just look at all the different colors that you see. Let's go. Kendall and her friends were rescued from a factory farm. A factory farm is a place where hens like Kendall are kept inside for their entire lives and they don't have enough room to even spread their wings. So it can be a really sad and scary environment for them. It's not very good. The good thing is Kendall and her friends were rescued by Posado Safe Haven and now get to live outside and live happy and fulfilling lives stretching their wings as much as they want. Did you know that we feed our eggs back to the chickens here? That is because domesticated chickens, like the ones here in this yard, they have been bred over time to produce far more eggs than they were naturally intended to. And when they lay these eggs, they're losing a lot of important vitamins and nutrients from their bodies. So, in order to help out our chickens, we feed the eggs back to them so that they can eat those vitamins and nutrients that they've lost. Next up, goats. Now we are about to go inside our Narn pasture. This pasture was named after an organization called Narn, which stands for the Northwest Animal Rights Network. Inside this pasture is where our goats live. Let's go inside and meet a couple. Most of our goats were rescued from the animal agriculture industry. This is Piglet, and she spent the majority of her life on a dairy farm where she had to make lots of babies in order to produce lots of milk. When the farm realized that Piglet was getting too old to continue to have babies, they didn't want her anymore, and she was going to be killed to be used for meat. The good news is, is she was rescued by Posado Safe Haven and now gets to live out her old age here at our sanctuary. Did you know that goats use their horns to manage their temperatures? Yep, just like how humans sweat or dogs pant in order to keep cool in the summer, goats use their horns in the same way. They're really important for them. Unfortunately, there are many farms that remove their horns. Here at Posado Safe Haven, we make a promise to our goats to never take their horns away because we know that they need them and they're an important part of their bodies.
Next up, donkeys. This is our donkey yard. In here, we have two donkeys named Jacques and Olay. Jacques and Olay are two mini donkeys and they are best friends. And the way donkeys show friendship can be really similar to how humans show friendship. So when we go inside, I want you to look for ways that Jacques and Olay show that they are best friends. Did you know that donkeys are very social animals? They're social in that they like to be with other donkeys or other animals. They need that companionship. Donkeys are also highly intelligent animals and they're good at using teamwork, solving puzzles, and also have amazing memories. So, how did the donkeys show their friendship? Did you notice that Jacques and Olay love to play together? Did they enjoy working as a team with puzzles and toys? Did they seem to always be side by side? What else did you see? Whatever it was, you did an excellent job observing how donkeys express their friendship. Take a moment to discuss with family and friends how the donkeys acted similar to or different from you and your friends. Next up, turkeys. This is Ziggy. He is showing off right now because he's very excited that we're all here visiting him today. When turkeys show off, they puff up their feathers to make them look bigger. His face turn bright colors and their snood hangs down. So what's a snood you might ask? Well, a snood is that little piece of skin that's hanging down in front of his face. And that hangs down when he is excited for visitors or when he's showing off to one of his lady turkeys over here behind us. This is Frank and Stella, and they are both very young turkeys. They're super curious and inquisitive and love looking around the world that they are a part of. Uh, one thing that's really, really cool about turkeys is they actually have amazing eyesight, and many people don't realize that. Turkeys can actually see more colors than humans can and can even see UVA light. Next up, pigs. Welcome to the pig yard. In this yard, we're going to meet Poppy, Rose, Sweet Pea, and Heart. Now, when we go inside, I want you to pay close attention to the environment that they live in. The environment that they live in is basically their home. So what does a pig need in their home to make them happy and healthy?
is Heart. And Heart is a very special girl who was rescued from a place where she was not getting the care that she deserved and needed. They were also using Heart to make babies so that they could sell her babies for meat. This was making Heart really, really sad and she ended up giving birth to stillborn babies. Heart was very, very depressed and of course was still being severely neglected. The good thing is, is Heart is rescued and now lives with us here at Posado Safe Haven where she gets all of the love and care that she deserves. So, what did you observe in their home? That the pigs like to have water or mud to play in and keep cool when it's hot out? That they like clean, fresh hay to snuggle and sleep in? Maybe that they like to explore and forage for things in their yard. What else? You were very observant about the things that pigs needed to feel happy and healthy in their home. What makes you feel comfortable in your home? Discuss this with your family and friends. Next up, cows. Welcome to the cow barn. They're all very excited that we have visitors for them today because visitors always means treats. So let's see who wants one. Did you know that cow tongues are just like cat tongues? They have bristles on them. That's because cows use their tongues in the same way that cats do. They use them to groom themselves, to clean each other, and to give nice licks on their fur. <laughs> All of our cows were rescued from the animal agriculture industry, and none of them would be alive today if they hadn't been rescued by Posado Safe Haven. This is Blue, and when Blue was a baby, he was born on a dairy farm. Because his mom was producing milk, Blue was taken away from her so that her milk could be given to humans instead of him. The good thing is, Blue was able to be rescued. Even though he needed his mom to teach him how to be a cow, to care for him, to nurture him, and to feed him, we were able to give him those things here at Posado Safe Haven. Now Blue is 11 years old and he is the biggest animal at our sanctuary. Here are some ideas that I have that you can all do from home. First thing is, you can start a donation drive for animals. Uh, there are lots of food banks that accept dog and cat food for animals in need. Another great way to help animals is to just keep learning, keep educating yourself on animal related issues and use what you've learned to teach others about animals and animal related issues and how they can help animals. And lastly, one of the best ways to help animals is to start eating less meat and other animal products. You don't have to do this right away. You could try one meal a day. You could try 
one meal a month, or you could try a whole week where you don't eat animal products. Whatever works for you. These are all great ways to help animals, and you can do a lot of them from the comfort of your own home. Thank you for joining me today on this sanctuary tour. The animals loved meeting you, and we really hope that next time you'll be able to join us in person at Posado Safe Haven.